I'm Deborah Lieberman, and I am a communication researcher at the University of California, Santa Barbara. My work focuses on the research and design of interactive digital games for learning and health. And currently, I direct a national program called Health Games Research, funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, their pioneer portfolio, um, which is designed for five years to advance the field of health games, and especially the research that's involved in health games. We provide scientific leadership to the field, and we have funded 21 research projects across the country with um, research teams that are studying various aspects of interactive games for health. Um, we have uh, work on various populations, various genres, game platforms, and processes or strategies for improving health behavior change. And today I want to uh, walk you through some of the features of interactive games that really make them compelling and powerful uh, environments for health behavior change. And then think about some future directions. We are talking about games that are digital, but they can be on a variety of platforms. The kinds of platforms we all think of, like consoles and computer screens and smartphones. Uh, but also, uh, think a little bit more broadly, because a game can be on any kind of digital medium. It could be on a, a robot, or it could be on a, a, a medical device. So um, wherever we can get digital uh, communication, we could have a digital game. And a game can, not, can be in a digital world where you're looking at a screen and everything is digital. Or it could be an adjunct to a game where in your, you are in your own world and you are playing with other people in the real environment and digital media might be in your pocket as a part of the um, catalyst for the game. Games are interactive, and I would argue that they're the most interactive media that we have today. In a game, everything that you do as a player, if the game is well designed, is going to be uh, fed back to you as your game state. So uh, games are designed to um, give you a lot of agency. You have making things happen in a game, and the game is reflecting back to you what you've done. And that's a really a lot of fun. Games are also immersive. When we play games, again, well-designed games with a good story or a very compelling game mechanic, we are in that world. We're very much in that world. And current research is showing us that those worlds are very real to us. We don't process them any differently than we do real life. So what's exciting about this immersive aspect of games, the fact that games are like real life, is that as players, we have real emotions when we play games. Those emotions are just as real as if we were interacting with people in front of us. Um, we have feelings about characters. Um, we care about characters. We feel triumph when we win. And that's something that we as game designers for health and learning can really uh, play with quite a bit and, and, and know that people can change their attitudes, change their self-concepts, learn skills, develop self-confidence in an immersive game-like world. Games are challenging and very, very motivating. Um, basically, what is a game? Um, fundamentally, as I look at it, a game is a, a, a challenging activity, a rule-based activity that involves challenge to reach a goal and provides feedback to the user about your progress toward the goal. So a game is like any other form of media. It can use any of our multimedia capabilities, but it has that added dimension of that challenge to reach a goal. And that's where a lot of the payoff is, I think, in terms of learning, striving, uh, trying, failing, and then winning, and really uh, undergoing some fundamental change. So this is very motivating. You've all had this experience playing one kind of game or another, where you just say, oh, one more time. I want to win. Let me just get a higher score, or I want to get to that next level. And that really pushes us. It focuses us in a way that um, a lot of other activities don't, just don't have that oomph. They're mission-driven, they're goal-driven. You know, you want that triumphant feeling of, I did it. And um, that really motivates us to try very, very hard. And games are really rewarding and fun. That's why people play games for hours and hours during their leisure time, uh, increasingly in this country and around the world, really. Um, and all age groups are playing games. And now that we're getting game interface, interfaces that are more intuitive and easy, we're not left with the game controller with all those A, B, X, Y buttons that uh, you know, people our age uh, don't quite understand, but younger people get you know, as if it were uh, you know, uh, using a remote control for TV. Um, 
Now we, we can join the fun with some easy uh, interfaces. And one of the strategies that works very well with health games is that what you want to do is make your game goals align with health goals. So you have a goal in the game to keep a character healthy or to nurture a character or to make good health decisions. And you can only win the game if you're making those good health decisions so that it's integrated. That's when you'll be motivated to, to win the game. I've seen health games where players will just ignore all this health stuff. Like uh, I developed a game in the 1990s for asthma self-management called Bronchi the Bronchiosaurus. And it was for uh, children and teens. And this was an asthmatic dinosaur. And he had a, a, an accomplice named Trachy. And uh, to play the game, you had to keep Bronchi's peak flow or his breath strength um, high, and you had to um, use your inhaler at the right time, you had to use med meds when you need them, you had to avoid asthma triggers in the environment, such as dust sacks and pollen and furry animals and sneezer characters that would sneeze cold viruses at you. And uh, so there was a lot of eye-hand coordination to try to avoid those asthma triggers. Um, and so when you hit them, your peak flow would go down and you were not able to win the game if Bronchi was not at peak health. And so players sometimes ignored that until they realized, oh my goodness, I really have to keep Bronchi healthy. So that was part of it. And uh, I'm showing in this slide some people playing a dance pad game. And uh, there's that reward and fun of uh, winning the game and uh, the physical exercise. Or a screen-based game where you might be, again, trying to make good health decisions in a game and that lets you win. Games can be designed to boost knowledge and skills. It's very easy to teach factual information in a game. People learn quite a bit, especially when that factual information is essential to win the game. One of the problems in our field is that many game designers stop there. They think a health game involves knowledge. Or even worse, it involves a Jeopardy game or a quiz game. They don't even teach you anything new, but they're just testing your knowledge. There's nothing wrong with a game like that, but it's such a tip of the iceberg in our field. I mean, games are experiences. Games are a chance to try things out and see what happens and to experience yourself in these worlds where uh, you are making decisions and seeing what happens. Um, you can learn skills uh, that involve uh, cognitive skills, such as all these brain games that are being developed now. Um, and uh, a lot of them are being researched and showing that we can improve our higher order thinking skills and some of our cognitive abilities, attentional abilities. And now that a lot more interfaces are physical, we can be learning actual physical skills. Um, and knowledge can be more than factoids. You can teach deeper understanding of cause and effect and how systems work in a game when you're going through a simulated world where you are making decisions and seeing those outcomes. Um, and those are the areas where I think it's especially exciting in our field and where research is showing that we really can lead to behavior change. That's really the goal. Knowledge is not enough when it comes to health. Most of us know exactly what we need to do to be perfectly healthy. And yet, there's a gap. We don't uh, always carry out the behavior. And uh, what we do as game designers is think about, well, what can we do to um, break some of those barriers? Those barriers might be self-confidence that you can actually carry out the behavior. Or it might be um, a feeling of uh, being stigmatized and you don't want to take care of yourself in front of your friends because you're fearing of being rejected. Whatever it is, we have to do a lot of research to understand what the dynamic is with our target audience and then uh, create games that uh, help ameliorate some of those problems that are blocking behavior change. Games give us feedback and chances to try again. And gamers expect this. They expect to lose again and again and again, and they keep trying, and that's part of the fun of the game. This young man, um, he's experiencing the sting of defeat right there, but you know he's going to get right back and keep playing, and uh, that's part of the fun of it. In fact, uh, one of the things that people do with games is they try to experiment with failure states. And they keep trying to see, well, what if I do everything wrong? What will happen? So a good health game designer is going to design toward failure state as well as toward success state and make all of them teachable moments. Games are social. Um, this picture is the epitome of it, in my opinion. Believe it or not, there is a, an online Wii bowling league around this country in senior centers, in hundreds of senior centers. And every week they meet and they are out for blood. 
They, are, they have their shirts, they've got their team names, they all have their player nicknames, and uh, they are having a blast. And uh, the social aspects of games are a huge area for boosting behavior change. It could be just getting people up and active and interacting and having social connections, which we know is associated with better health. But also, um, with social networks and um, games that involve teamwork and, uh, or competition and strategizing together, helping one another. There are all kinds of ways people teach each other about health in the social aspects of gaming. And that's an area that, um, again, needs more research, more understanding. There's lots of great opportunities to exploit our social nature. First of all, you know, we are very sensitive creatures when it comes to what we think is normal. And sometimes we have um, social norms in our minds that are um, much um, distorted. And sometimes a game can help uh, improve our, what, we, what we know to be as normal. Games are intergenerational, and there's some great work being done on looking at family dynamics with games. Games are therapeutic. That challenge to reach a goal is actually very motivating. And we've seen with physical therapy that patients are willing to work longer and work harder on uh, some of their physical therapy when it's in a game world. So here we have someone who's had a stroke and she's getting physical therapy and she's playing a game and I will bet you that um, she will perceive less um, pain and trauma from her therapy and she will have enjoyed it more and she will have worked harder. Games are springboards for discussion and support. Um, and so a game can simply be a way to get people talking about a health topic. There are also icebreakers that foster closer relationships. I've seen doctor-patient relationships change when they play games together. Now that we're ne networked mobile and games are always available, um, there are uh, new interfaces and new ways to play because we have the internet with us all the time and we're always connected to other people. And now we have more and more sensors that can play into how you design a game. You can have the uh, GPS system and knowing your physical location, and that can be part of a game where you have to go out. The camera is a, a nice tool. Um, one of our grantees is using cameras for people to take pictures of the food they eat so their coach can tell them how they're doing. The, um, uh, uh, there are ways to measure physiological states, such as uh, your heart rate, or blood pressure, or weight or um, how nervous you are with your galvanic skin response or your brain waves. And all of these can play into health games in some very exciting ways. Being a character or helping a character is also a great way um, to influence the, character's, uh, your, the player's self-concepts. Here's, here's Bronchi, our asthmatic dinosaur, and also Remission, a game by Hope Lab, which um, you go into the body of cancer patients and you nurture them, you take care of their cancer by um, giving them chemotherapy and blasting away at marauding cancer cells. I'm out of time, so there isn't uh, time to uh, tell you a little bit about my ideas about future and where the research can be headed and where, where our games can be heading. But at least I've given you a, uh, a bit of an idea of um, how we're designing games and where games can be going. So thank you very much.